there are two kinds of motion. The first one's uniform motion, and we've been talking about this already. And there's only one formula for uniform motion, and that is V is equal to D over T. So uniform motion is when your speed is constant. It's not changing. And we can represent uniform motion in graphs. So the first is an example of a distance time graph. So when you have a straight line either sloping up or sloping down, that is an example of uniform motion. It means you're moving at a constant rate. If you have a distance time graph that's a horizontal line, well, let's think about this. Let's pretend this was 10, 10 meters. Well, at one second, you're at 10 meters. 10 meters, 10 meters, 10 meters, 10 meters. Doesn't matter where on the line I'm looking, you're always at 10 meters. So it's definitely uniform, it's not changing. But what's also happening is you're not moving anywhere. You're just staying where you are, which is 10 meters away from where you started. So whenever you see a horizontal line, we know that's uniform motion. And in fact, the person's at rest, he's not moving. Here's our last example of uniform motion. This is a speed time graph. So let's say our speed was uh, 5 meters per second. Well, at one second, you're at 5 meters per second. Still at 5 meters per second. Still at 5 meters per second. Still at 5 meters per second. So in a speed time graph, if you have a horizontal line, it means your speed's not changing. It's constant. Our second kind of motion is something called acceleration. Because the reality is, we're not always moving at a constant speed. You have to start, like if you get into your car, your car is at rest, and we accelerate up to our speed. Or if there's a red light, you decelerate down to zero. So if the speed is not constant, then it must be changing. The rate of change in speed is called acceleration. So all acceleration is how quickly are we speeding up or slowing down? This is non-uniform motion. So acceleration, the symbol we use for acceleration is small a. It's changing speed in an interval of time. And we can write the formula out one of two ways. You can say a is equal to delta v divided by t. The delta, it's a Greek symbol, it just means the change in speed. So if I tell you what the change in speed is, you just use this part. The other way I could write the, the questions would be to say, all right, you're going from 20 meters per second to 50 meters per second. So you're going to have to subtract your two speeds to get your change in speed. So I've written VF minus VI. F stands for your final speed. I is your initial speed. So all you would have to do is go your final speed, subtract your initial speed, and that gives you your change in speed. There are two different units we use for acceleration. The first one's kind of a practical one that makes sense in our brains because our cars, speedometers are in kilometers per hour, and usually when we speed up or slow down because the light goes green or red, we do it in a matter of a couple seconds. So kilometers per hour is our speed and it changes over a matter of a couple seconds. The proper unit for acceleration is actually this one. It's meters per second per second, or we pronounce it meters per second squared. A couple examples with acceleration. So this example here says Mrs. Mernick accelerates at 10 meters per second squared. So 10 meters per second squared, that's an acceleration. So you would simply write A is equal to 10 meters per second squared for three seconds. Seconds is always measuring time. So I know my time and I want to know what is her change in speed. So I'm looking for that delta V. Delta V just means change in speed. So the first thing you do when you solve any physics problem is you write down the given information, including what you're looking for. Next, you look at your formulas. Well, we have two formulas. We have V is equal to D over T. That's uniform motion. You can't use that here. This is acceleration, so we must use our acceleration formulas. So when I bring this note back, we have two. We have one that has the change in speed divided by time. So that's the one I'm going to use. So you write it down. So we know A is equal to the change in speed divided by time. However, this formula is solving for A. I don't want A by itself, I want delta V by itself. So to get delta V by itself to rearrange, you always do the opposite. Right now, delta V is being divided by T. So the opposite divided by T is to multiply both sides by T. The T's will cancel out. And I have AT is equal to delta V. 
And that's totally fine, except the better way to write this is to always write whatever you're solving for on the left side. So delta V is equal to AT. A is 10. T is 3. So 10 times 3 is 30 meters per second. And we're done. This is our last example for acceleration. It says a cyclist accelerates from 5 meters per second to 15 meters per second. Meters per second is measuring a speed. So this must be our initial, that's our starting speed. So I'm going to write down VI is equal to 5 meters per second. And our final speed is 15. So VF, F for final, meters per second in four seconds. Well, seconds is always measuring time. Time is four seconds. What is his acceleration? So I'm looking for A. Well, we know two formulas. We know V equals D over T, but that's uniform motion. I can't use that here. So I must use one of my acceleration formulas. So this time I wasn't given the change in speed, but I was given the final and the initial speeds. So I'm going to use this part of the formula. And you would simply just write down a is equal to VF minus VI divided by T. I'm looking for A, so there's no need to rearrange this time. I can just put in what I know. So the VF is 15 minus 5 divided by 4. 15 minus 5 is 10, so 10 divided by 4. I put that into my calculator, and I end up with 2.5, and the units will be meters per second squared.